This is Jensen USA's first look at the 2023 Yeti SB160. What's up everyone, Mark here from Jensen USA. In today's video, I got a special guest. This is Kyle. Kyle, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do here at Jensen? Oh, it's a pleasure. So what, uh, what I do here at Jensen is uh, I'm in charge of our bag category here. Uh, so procurement, bringing in our brands, what we think is going to be hot and what's really on top of the market. And we're trying to stay on top of that. And that's why we're really excited to bring you this new 23 Yeti SB160. This thing is all new for this year from the platform up and really it just ticks all those boxes. All right, Kyle. So why don't you tell us a little bit about why Yeti designed this bike and you know, what's it designed for? So the, the new SB160, uh, the predecessor being the 150, so staying on that trend of the enduro market, really jumping up in that travel or bumping up in, in that travel. Uh, Yeti was one of the first to really get into the enduro, longer bread of bikes. So this is just really refining and retuning that to state of those market trends. It's been four years since Yeti's uh, came out with the 150 and now coming out with this 160. Um, so this bike is really gonna be uh, top of the crops of the enduro riding uh, scene here. It puts us more back into the travel, what we were seeing now. The 150 was getting a little dated and then the travel size was getting on the uh, smaller end of the enduro scene of travel wise. So this puts us right in that category of where we're looking at a 170 front, 160 rear. Uh, again, like most bikes now, that little longer, a little slacker. Um, and what's really sort of cool with this year that they've done is some uh, size specific chain stays as well as uh, C2 angles on this guy. So really just staying up with those trends, uh, not really redefining everything, but making those fine new tweaks. And uh, what Getty's always known for is that race bread and uh, this bike has definitely race, uh, got those race chops ready to go race. Awesome. So I mean, definitely what we're seeing with this bike here is like it's super designed for that super fast race, you know, pointed downhill, watch it just, you know, roll over whatever you put in front of it. What's like, you know, what kind of rider you see really getting the full benefit out of this bike? So what's uh, characteristic wise, a little bit different uh, from the 150 jumping into the 160 this year is, is yet he's actually made this bike a little bit more centered balance, uh, more so than what like the 150 was. So where I'm more saying with that, you're actually gonna sit a little bit more centered on this bike. Yeti typically had a long, full reach and you had to ride that thing really far in that front end. This is going to give a much better uh, balanced feel. The schematics of it, as well as the uh, suspension design, frame rigidity has definitely changed quite a bit on this uh, with a new yoke system. This bike is going to really be for that race bred guy that really wants to go out uh, and, and wants to do some of their local enduro racing. Um, you can do the bark days on it. But what I do actually really love about the Switch Infinity links that uh, Yeti ha uh, is designed around is they do still carry a, a good pedaling platform so you don't get much bob out of this. So even though it's a 170, 160 bike, you still could go put these uh, an epic day in that you're doing some big climbs uh, if you really got those rounded descents. So if you're willing to spin it, uh, it's gonna be rewarded on that downhill. All right, Kyle, so why don't you tell us a little bit about some of the new features and innovations that are coming with the SV160 in 2023. Awesome, so what we have in front of us here is the T model. This is the uh, T1 to be exact. This is the first step up into the higher carbon layout. Um, so what you're really gonna find on this bike that's quite a bit different than, I, I mean, I, I've been a Yeti owner for years and uh, all of us have always been pounding, probably first and foremost, they listen, threaded bottom bracket. For Christ's sake, so it's been a long time. I'm yeah. super stoked to see that for just a, a whole mechanic like myself, no, uh, no creaking, service intervals, pretty easy on this. Um, this bike, like I said, really race bred. What you'll notice and profile wise over uh, the 150 is they trimmed out a lot on the bottom side of the frame. So the profiles changed quite a bit. Um, it did have a bigger uh, profile on the bottom that would be prone to hitting rocks and stuff like that. So they did tuck that up in there to be able to get away with more ground clearance, really tighten that up. They have a brand new yoke system on this as well. And um, from someone that does like their own service and uh, we don't live in a wet climate, but we live in a really dusty climate that goes through bearings. What I really do like that Yeti has changed this year is the yoke system, the bearings are pressed into the yoke and the chains itself. So the bearings are not pressed into the carbon frame where you can get uh, some little more creaking, a little more noise, as well as um, I'm a little, little shy in pressing bearings right into carbon. So I do like having that full yoke symbol in there as well. Uh, also, what Yeti has done, and they've carried this over from the ARC from last year's release of this, is it's just some awesome like tie downs on their full routed cables. They actually have crimped down 
on the cables. Um, I hate noise. This is one of those that I really enjoy. I don't have that noise on there. And also one of the cool little features is if you're running like a wireless access kit or anything like that as well, it does the bike does come with caps that cap this over. So you're not getting water or fluid or anything down inside there. Um, like most bikes staying on the trim, on the rear we're seeing right here is it went to a universal derailleur hanger. So that's the SRAM universal derailleur hanger. So if you're out on, you know, out, you know, a race or just out of the park or so, you pretty much find one of those at any shop nowadays. They're inexpensive. Uh, I carry one normally in one of my bags or my pocket or so while I'm out. Um, that's where you're going to see some of that, a lot of that differences through there. They did change quite a bit of the kinematics of this bike to really uh, give it a better riding sensibility itself, a little bit more supple off of that, but that progression uh, going through that linear stroke of it. So it's going to give a good ride characteristic, but still have a pretty deep fill. Yet he's always known that you can just feel fast and the bike's just telling pushy to want to go fast. So um, this really carried over into this. Like I said, this is more those little reaffinements to making something that was great, just, you know, almost to that. I, I can't imagine too much being better than what these are going to be now. Um, you know, besides, I, I don't know what the future has for us, but with some of the finer tunes and stuff that you're seeing on this, uh, this bike definitely is going to be the top of its class and bred, uh, bred to be racing in there. So uh, with that said, you know, like I said, this is the T1. They're not cheap. It's a Yeti. I, we realize this, but uh, what Yeti has done is they do offer their C level carbon, um, which is a little bit different carbon layouts, a little, a little more weight or so. Uh, ride rigidity and stuff is, is said to not feel much different between them. I've ridden bulls. Um, if you could tell me you feel the difference, uh, I'd be questionable on that. I think it's a placebo of that sense. Um, but you get that little bit weight savings through uh, the T series of the C1. Um, and the C1 builds also come. Uh, with those with factory upgrades as well. So the seat builds typically come with performance level suspension. You can pay to get the upgrade on the suspension on that. I really do think uh, where cost meets that trade off, it's really hard because I do like the T1 build. It's it's pretty set right there uh, to go. Um, and I think if you're you're looking at a bike of this caliber, I really do think the T1, this build right here is, is probably gonna be the guy that I would suggest the most. It's already got a little bit lighter frame as well as it's got the factory suspension. And it does have a little bit different yoke system on this sort of through the C series and the uh, the T series. So this guy right here, um, like I said, ready to go. I mean, you can look through it. We can, we can spot out some of the, the highlights on here, but there's really nothing on this bike uh, that's going to leave anyone to desire anything they want. All right. So now we've kind of go over some of the features. Kyle, I know you're you know the expert here when it comes to all the bikes coming into Jensen. You've ridden a ton of bikes. Maybe you can help tell us a little bit about, you know, where this bike fits in the category in comparison to other bikes and maybe similarities that people can start building that when they're looking at, you know, possibly grabbing one of these. Yeah, so so again, like, I mean, uh, I'm stoked to see this new bike. There's like, there's no bad bike on the market any longer. Uh, characterized and stuff changed just a little bit. Where I put that Yeti in is, is really that, like again, that race bread, you know, like a, that's one of the slogans that you get from, from Yeti. It is a fast bike. But what I do really like about the Yetis when you get up into this, this uh, bigger travel platform, they still travel pretty well. They don't wallow in the suspension. They do have a tendency to like actually want to urge you to pedal these things. So I put this more like that, uh, you know, on the, on the contrary of sizes and, and stuff. Uh, the new uh, Orbea Rayon um, would be something I would put very compatible in, uh, in, in pedaling platform, in riding characteristic, as well as sort of like a, like a Rocky Mountain, um, uh, you know, element is, or not the element, the uh, altitude itself. So they're enduro bike and stuff. Um, so you know, two of the top bikes that we've seen on the EWS this year, uh, battling it up, um, really sort of put them in those. Like I would say your, your more all mountain enduro bikes that you can still ride every day, but are really fast, not quite maybe as plush and or as forgiving as some of like the super enduro bikes. Like I, I would say like more of a mega tower or some of those guys a little bit softer or so, but if I was going to be doing a little tighter uh, tracks or actually riding this or having this as a one bike, uh, this would probably be the, uh, the top of my list. Awesome. So if you have any further questions, make sure to reach out to our Gear Advisor Pros. They know everything about this SB160. They're happy to answer all those questions. And uh, why don't you do us a favor and leave a comment below saying if you have this SB160, where's the first trail you go and take it out there? And uh, as always, keep pedaling.